Well, welcome to episode number 31 of Tech News Week. I am Richard Cleveland. I'm uh, stepping in to host this week. Duke is a little under the weather this week and asked me if I could step in and help things out. With us, we have our panel of people that we have each and every week. we got some great news for you. And let's start down the line. We're going to start with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Bruce Turner. Yes, and I bring you greetings from high atop the Fairfield in Marriott, Florida, where I get really great reception. <laughs> and next to him, we have Kieran. And I'm coming to you from slightly less sunny Aberystwyth, Wales. Uh, we get no reception or anything else for that matter. George, and we'll just keep going down the line. Yeah, might as well. Uh, I'm George, and I'm in... Uh... Uh, not so sunny, but really cold Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, that's about it. Hey, everybody. Oh, what? wait, what beer was that? Got, got some, okay, that's beer. That'll work. I'm uh, Glenn. I'm in uh, Lexington, Kentucky, uh, just over the hills from George, and uh, enjoying some beer. And I'm Jeff Zayas. I'm representing the West Coast, or as we say, the best coast, uh, outside of San Francisco. And uh, I'll turn it over to the next guy. Hi. Uh, my name is Joseph Yusuf. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, where East Side is the best side. And uh, if it's Microsoft, I probably like it. Hi, I'm Robert Taylor, and I represent the South, the real South. In Orleans, Louisiana. I'm an IT consultant here. Okay, I'm Duke Carrico, and uh, hold my beer and watch this. And one more thing. Hey, you know what? Uh, I've learned that you can vomit uh, long after you thought you were through vomiting. <laughs> oh, and, and there you have it, folks. The price of the show tonight. <laughs> right oh, there. yes. The bottom. Oh. Right up front. Well, I got to tell you guys. A chunky monkey. We got a lot to get to tonight, so let's uh, let's dive right in. Let's start with Windows 8 pricing. It looks like it's going up, and it's going to be. Uh, we're going to see that rise in February. What do you guys think about this? Is two hundred dollars going to be too expensive for Windows 8? And yes. twenty dollars is too expensive. For forty dollars was way too expensive. Seeing that the machine I'm on right now, rocking Windows 7, does beautiful. Right. Try and install is, Windows 8. It's done. It the thing do is, it. Windows, like, if they were, ch you know, the amount they're charging for it isn't the problem here. The problem is it's so different, at least in appearance. It, people are still scared of it. They're still apprehensive towards it. So the, the only thing going for them at that point was the fact that the price was quite low. So now they're going, oh, by the way, it's the same price as all the others. <laughs> Put up with it. They're all going to go, nope. Sticking with this, and we'll people still minutes. whine about Windows 8. Guys, there's nothing wrong with Windows 8. Forty dollars is a great price. Two hundred dollars is way too much, though. Get used to it. Learn how to press the Windows key, for goodness' sake. The price it, it dispels another rumor that was going out, where there were where some people thought that Microsoft would bring out an operating system every year. And then you have to pay thirty or forty dollars for for every new upgrade, kind of like going from I don't know uh, Apple Lion um, ten point six to ten point seven. I don't know what they're you know where they're at at right now, but I mean that, that you know so it dispels that. But the other thing that's that's kind of screwing this off is um, people used to measure Microsoft by PC sales. When they dropped to that forty dollar price range, they stopped measuring by PC sales and start measuring by licenses. And that kind of threw away their, their metrics off. So maybe they're trying to come back to the way they were. I'm not sure that I, I would agree with all of that. Really, when it comes down to it is Windows 8 doesn't offer any wonderful, outstanding experience that makes a $200 price point make sense. $40, people are willing to try. $200, $100, no way. This type of device is the only type of device that Windows 8 will fit properly. Is touch screen. Well, I don't I know if it, I necessarily I use, agree I, with that. I use it with my mouse and keyboard just fine. I did, yeah, yeah, I, I disagree. I like yeah. Windows 8 on, on my non-touch computers, okay? I like it. I can appreciate anybody who can't. I like it. I don't need touch to like it. 
Yeah, I would have. Yeah. I like. I like it. I wouldn't have paid 150 pounds for it. That wouldn't happen. I'm a student. I can't afford that sort of thing. You know. You yeah, you can't. Yeah, well, you're going to have to get a job. Um, so <laughs> I study uh, film. You, I can never Windows, get a Windows, job. Windows 8. I, I'm with Duke. It breathed new life into um, my old laptop. So two hundred dollars might be a little bit, a little bit steep. Yeah. Forty dollars was a steal. You know, okay. I don't know, but I don't know what the up. What is the upgrade cost now? Is it still? Is it two hundred dollars to upgrade, yeah. or yeah. is it just brand new? Right. It's a, it's forty dollars right now to upgrade to Pro, but it that jumps to two hundred dollars come February. Yeah, Here's but I'm saying if you were to if yeah, it's, it's upgrades, upgrade price will be two hundred dollars. Listen, there, there's a lot of stuff about Windows 8 that you don't hear people talking about. Startup time, when they shifted to UEFI from BIOS, the boot up time is faster on Windows 8 compared to Windows 7. Security with this new Windows 8 kernel that they built from the ground up, it's ruggedized against malware and root kits. Power management, much better in Windows 8. And all people want to talk about is the tiles, the tiles. My God, learn how to press the start key and get over it. I well, can't even install it. Tiles. Let, let me talk about the things that don't work. How about my Microsoft keyboard that's less than a year old? It doesn't work. It doesn't have Windows 8 driver. My Microsoft 2012 Hyper-V that I cannot connect to from a Windows 8 workstation. The list goes on and on. That's My not laptop. to say that I don't appreciate the faster speed, but the things that I can do with Windows 7, I cannot do with Windows 8. Hmm. Yeah. So Well, eventually you will be able to do with Windows 8. Yeah. Eventually, but that yeah. doesn't help me now. Yeah, I like Explorer in Windows 8. I like Task Manager in Windows 8. I like uh, the ability to reset and refresh. Uh, it's it's a it's a tremendous help to desktop users. I do miss Microsoft Bob though. Oh, uh, who Bob, doesn't? Clippy. But, um, you know, and it, the Windows the Windows X the Windows key in X gives you a nice little shortcut that you can get you to most of the things that you need to get to right away. So um, once you get used to the interface, it rocks, man. I, yeah. I think I think at this stage it's still too immature to. Uh, you know, to pay a premium for. If it were a, a, you know, a fully developed operating system, and you were paying, you know, and you were paying the, uh, the two hundred dollars for it, I think people would be a little less apprehensive. The problem is, it's still quite young. It still has a lot to prove, and it still has a lot of people to impress and a lot of functionality to add. So, you know, getting not a good back, move. Getting back to Richard's question, though, is two hundred dollars too much? Yes. How about yes. We, yes. How about, how about yeah, we do the course. thumbs thing? Would we pay two hundred dollars to upgrade to Windows Eight? I think this is going to encourage more um, piracy because that was one of those things that Microsoft always tried to, you know, clamp down on. And with that forty dollars price range now going away, I think you're going to see some more encouragement and less incentive to buy a license. Yep. All right. Do so you that have, do you guys know? Do you guys know about file history in Windows Eight? How that Windows 8 file history keeps an incremental version backups of the files in your libraries. And you yeah. type file history into the start screen, select settings from the right, click on check file history. It's a, it's, it's a primitive form of versioning, which simply means that updated versions of files don't overwrite the original backup. There's a lot of great things about Windows 8 that nobody's writing about. I, I th th we're not saying it's bad. We're just saying that this is first it's a bad price and second it's a bad time to do the pricing change too early agree yeah i kind of think that uh we're all in the same boat with that we should wait for i think service pack one to at least come out before they bring the the upgraded price out i think that would make it a more mature operating system and i think then they'd have some of these these bugs worked out but right now in february going to 200 dollars, in my opinion is a little too much right now but we'll have to wait and see. Next on our list, we've got some BlackBerry news. It looks like RIM could sell off their hardware division post-launch, says uh, the CEO from uh, with the BlackBerry 10. What do you guys think about this? I don't get it. Why would they do that? It's like they're bread and butter right there. They've got. They've always had the hardware down. The only thing they just didn't. Everyone wanted was a touchscreen, which they already had. They just needed a good user interface to play with it, which is what their problem is. So why sell what they have that's going good for the thing that people are skeptical about? 
I, I think their, their keypad or keyboard definitely helped them out. The only issue is is that they hardware wise were always lacking. Like they had they had decent hardware for what it was supposed to be. But they weren't doing, you know, like the they're not doing like the Android's dual core, quad core. They weren't giving it the horsepower and the memory. Um, last it, time I touched a BlackBerry, it took five minutes to boot from totally off to fully running. Yeah, but I mean, five minutes. It. No one ever thought about it. It worked. It was fine. It was well, rocking. It had amazing battery life. I have to disagree there. I've had several friends who are on BlackBerry contracts, and about five months into their contract, the phone just falls apart. The build quality is absolutely atrocious in some of these devices. Not all of yep. them, not at all. Yeah, true. But yep. there are, you know, I, I would say I've got five friends at least who have BlackBerry phones. <laughs> After about five months, they get over the BlackBerry honeymoon, and they start to realize their phone just sucks. It's software-wise, it doesn't connect to the internet anymore, things like that. It will stop working in general, and yeah. then the buttons will start falling off, the screen will start coming out of place, everything just stops working. I think, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's the problem is, you know, they need to sell this division maybe because of cutbacks, I would have thought. That seems to be their most likely So, So, Kiri, you're saying your friends never consummated the relationship. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I think that's uh, illegal in Britain. Moon is I, think, I think that's pretty, illegal here. I'm pretty sure that is. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, especially since these people have, were underage when they had the phones. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> no, I'm so, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, BlackBerry, <laughs> and, you know, with what uh, BlackBerry okay, decided here, to do. Here, here, here's my thoughts real quick on BlackBerry. Uh Microsoft uh, hasn't sold very many phones uh, without having their own phone hardware division. Uh, Google, however, and I know we're comparing apples to watermelons here, but, uh, you know, Google doesn't necessarily have to have a hardware division to successfully sell phone operating systems. I know they're not selling them, but, the, the you know, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, I think it's kind of sad, but I think RIM has forced their hand here. Uh, I do think it's a better overall experience when someone is like Apple who controls both the hardware and the software experience. With that said, the two don't have to go hand in hand for them to be successful. Mm -hmm. Would it say to, then that uh, RIM and Microsoft should team up? No. Uh, I, I, I was going to say, Duke, you, they don't have to. But that's always been RIM's true niche. It wasn't so much the operating system. It wasn't so much the the hardware. It was the way they worked together, plus their administrative backend for business enterprise environment. They're really trying to hope that the fact that they can work it for enterprise is going to save them. And that's not so much true anymore because the enterprise environment is the consumer. And yeah, the I consumer wants a cool really, I don't think I don't think hardware has anything to do with RIM's failure in the market. Okay, hardware, mm -hmm. RIM's hardware did did not put RIM where they are today. RIM, their failure to innovate, period, is what put mm -hmm. RIM there today. Has anyone seen that commercial with the uh, unicorn uh, apocalypse? No. They're making fun about uh, RIM and being secure with the Gal against the Galaxy phones. So uh, RIM, since, uh, RIM has some problems coming up, and they're trying to... They're trying to address them. They're trying yeah, they, to. They are trying hard. This is the thing. They are coming out with it, their product looks decent. BlackBerry Ten looks like a decent operating system. Unfortunately, it's it, it's like you know the problem with it's like the same problem with Microsoft's Windows Eight phone. It's standing against two extremely strong, um, you know, competitors in the market, and in terms of software. The, you know, the thing that Microsoft has going for it is Windows 8 looks different. BlackBerry 10 doesn't look as different. Neither does Firefox OS coming onto that. I mean, I saw that and I thought, iPhone? iPhone. You know, it's, you know this is the problem. The market is just saturated. And well, you, they're not really here. breaking through. Here's a little note from uh, Joey uh, Escobel. Uh, and it's, it's really bad when his mother told him that she's switching from BlackBerry to the Samsung Galaxy 3. So when Joey's mom's doing it, they're in trouble, right? She's going from a Pinto to a Ferrari. That's what that is. <laughs> you go uh, from a BlackBerry to anything uh, within the past three months from, I'll even give Windows the option. That's like going from a Pinto to a Ferrari. 
Yeah, I mean, like I say, I got friends who get they just they're just sick of their phones now, and mostly it's it's BlackBerry software failure, um, but it's also the the hardware failing. So I don't really, you know, I to be honest, at this point in time, uh, Rim isn't gonna have that bigger. It's not gonna shake up the market so much, you know. Them selling on their hardware division, all right, sure, well, Evs, go for it. You know, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's no good way to segue out of RIM's troubles with their hardware division, but let's talk about somebody else's troubles, and that's Kim.com is back in the news with his new mega upload site, and uh, what he's saying here is that he's got a whole bunch of new users. What uh, I think it was something like a million users in the first few hours of him uh, engaging this new mega upload site. Now, is this going to be a good thing? Or is this going to be a bad thing? Are the cops going to come after Kim.com again? Probably. You know, uh, I, I'm sorry, but I just uh, don't feel comfortable trusting Kim.com with my data. I think I wouldn't put, like, I wouldn't put my schoolwork on Mega. I wouldn't put anything, like, vital on there because, of course, you do run the risk of it. It's not like a... You know, it doesn't have. It's not attached to a massive uh, sort of uh, giant among you know a media giant like Google or Apple or, or Microsoft. So I wouldn't really trust them with incredibly important documents. Uh, but at the same time, 50 gigabytes of free storage, yeah, go for it. Temporary files, anything like that, I'll store that there. Yeah, I'll put yeah. my projects in there that I'm working on and put it out there, or things I'm sharing with the community. That that's yeah. a great place to put it up. And, and, and really, the old mega up upload wasn't a bad place either. <laughs> I, and I think that shows that people still want this, and people aren't want, willing to let it go away. Hmm. Well, I think the fact that it got into the top fifteen most used sites uh, in the, you know for the month that shows a heck of a lot about dot com status and about what you know what he's uh, what the service he's providing means to people. Right after they took down his site, I was looking at rooting my phone. It took me easily three days to find one link that was not a mega upload site. Mega upload, I mean, and it's it's a free software. It's not doing anything illegal. It's free. It's open source. It's ready to go. Have fun. Do whatever you want. So the fact that the government took them down, and in fact, megaupload.com is still showing the FBI we took this because we can. Is still up there but I mean it just you know there were people who had their school papers on there there were people who had you know open source projects they were working on and they all got hosed and that was all thanks to the government yeah but it, and again whether you agree or disagree with what the government has done the bottom line is, is he's a marked man so you go through all the, the steps and start storing your things there and what happens when he gets shut down again and you instantaneously lose access to everything again? I, I can't trust that. Google Drive provides me that much space plus more at a very, very reasonable price. Yeah, I mean... Why even risk it? Why even bother? He's a marked man. Yeah, but, you know, it, that that's all well and good. I mean, like I said, I would never put any schoolwork on Mega, on Mega just because, like you say... There's every chance he could get caught and shut down. It's you know it might be that a lot of people think that way, but a huge number of people obviously don't. It's you know it, it's proving to be incredibly popular, which means it's going to be incredibly prevalent in everything we do. If you download any uh, open source software, like Glenn was saying, you download a, a sort of like Odin or something. These people can now have a huge amount of storage space uh, for free. And they're going to route a lot of traffic through Mega. So, you know, people are going to use it. Well, that's, uh, that pretty much Google sums Drive up. Google Drive works really good for me and my needs. Exactly. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah at least we know with Google Drive, you're not, uh, you know, I, I just there's not a lot of piracy on. going on. Go ahead, Bruce. Exactly. Yeah, when, when Box came out, um, I just happened to, you know, I was following my Twitter feed, and I saw this, somebody tweeted, say, you know, go join Box right now, and you get 50 gigabytes free. I jumped on it, got my 50 gigabytes free, and uh, I love Box. My company uses Box. I mean, we've got, I don't know how many terabytes we have on our company plan with Box. 
but uh, so I can log into my company box account or I can log into my personal box account. But uh, yeah, I might just start storing my Facebook data on there. You know, back it up because if I lose that, no harm done. <laughs> All right, so who's going to tackle uh, our uh, stupid... Boy, we got a uh, YouTube comment. Okay, what do we got? Uh, she says, I agree, I don't trust them to upload stuff, but I love the hacks I can find. <laughs> I think that's I think that's true with Mega, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like a lot of things. It's, you know, it's going to be that sort of lovable sort of shady corner of the internet you're not quite sure but it's got a lot of useful stuff on it i like reddit hit and miss <coughs> all right who's going to tackle our first stupid tech moment of the week don't everybody speak at once i'll take it so you got this newscaster and you know she's used to focusing on words that are written down and so much so that she might lose track of everything else around her. And she's texting her boyfriend, who uh, uh, also, according to this story, is uh, just so astoundingly gorgeous that she would have walked through morning traffic in Manhattan just to send him an LOL. Anyway, Laura Safe is this lady's name. And, uh, yeah, that's a real name, Laura Safe. Uh, but yeah, she seemed to be texting her boyfriend and fell right off the sidewalk into a freezing canal. So another, uh, another moment when technology makes us stupid instead of smarter. I think that's also known as uh, natural selection. Darwinism, yeah. Hey, she's still making more money than most people if she's in New York doing that. <laughs> well, you know, I kind of think that this brings up that old adage, don't text and walk at the same time. We had a Canadian broadcaster or newscaster, and I think you can find it on the uh, the fails of the year from last year, where he walks straight into a pole as he's trying to talk to a guy. <laughs> yeah, well, I think uh, after that, she gave her, go uh, she gave her boyfriend the cold shoulder, so... <laughs> Well, it'll be a lonely night in his room tonight. Let's move on. Uh, we're about 24 minutes into the show, and we want to talk a little bit more about Microsoft today. And right now, they're, it's being said that they're starting to blaze the trail for the next PC with what they're saying is take the electronics out from underneath the keyboard, put it behind the screen, and we'll have a much better PC to work with. What do you guys think? I think we're seeing that with pretty much everything. I mean, iPads are, you know, starting to replace laptops, essentially. Uh, I don't think that was ever really a question that that was where we're going. With, you know, we're getting all-in-one PCs, tablets. It's going to happen. I don't think Microsoft hold a monopoly on, you know, affecting this change. Mm -hmm. Do you think, though, that the operating system was uh, a push in that direction? Hey. Anybody? Uh, well, you're breaking up a little bit there, Richard, but did you say you think the operating Windows 8 operating system was a push in that direction? Yes. Yeah, I, yeah of course. Yeah, exactly. They, they know, they, they saw the tablet market. They knew where it was moving to. They're trying to marry, marry the tablet market with the enterprise system, and um, that's what Windows 8 is all about. It won't be yeah. long until, because, I mean, if you look at the way Mac OS X has been going with, like, 10.7 and 10.8, they've tried to integrate a lot of iPad features into it. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we're going to see those two merge quite soon. You know, we'll have, like, a, for a while, we'll have a sort of a, a range of devices, including, like, a top-end iPad, I would have thought, soon, uh, that runs a sort of desktop operating system. And then it will eventually just condense down into the sort of tablet form factor. I, I think the two new versions that deal with peripherals is that you'll have touch screens for tablets and you'll have some sort of um, <clears throat> thing similar to Leap Motion where you'll be able to use your hand or, or, or Leap Motion and Connect where you'll be using that for desktop environments. I think those are where we're going to be for the next 10 years. 
Well, the, the, I don't think it's going to be 10 years, Joe. And, and I think there's one part that nobody's mentioned yet, and that's actually voice recognition or voice command. Okay. Yeah. Once that I, we're actually coming into the realm where our hardware can actually do and keep up with what we're speaking and, and know what we're speaking and then perform actions based on that. So once that really comes to be, then you're really going to see the keyboard start to disappear. It's not so much just touch screens, but actually using the voice to control and interact with our PC. Mm -hmm. In, in I me, wish that Google Hangouts would be able to follow our, our voice right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's following our voice, but there's a little bit of a lag. Just but a I think bit. it's I think it's going to be all of the above. I think it's going to be voice commands. I think it's going to be, you know, gestures. All the, those things are, you know, prevalent in the, you know, Android operating system and, and, uh, and obviously iOS. So that's just going to take place at the tablet and desktop as well. I, 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 yeah. I, just yeah. wanna, I wanna just to reinforce what Jeff said. I also want to say that the keyboard's not going anywhere. Yeah, we're going to have voice and gesture and touch, but but the keyboard is still going to be there. The keyboard and the mouse is still going to be around for years to come. We might be using those two tools less in applications, but they, they'll still be used. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine, uh, uh, you know, as a video editor using a touchscreen device or a, uh, you know, especially not voice commands. Uh, we either need consoles or ergonomic peripherals because uh, fingers are not precise enough. Uh, you know, the touchscreen is not precise enough. My fingers are fat in compared to a, you know, a mouse pointer. Now, let me ask any of you guys with the Nexus 7 or the Nexus 10 tablet, have any of you tried pairing a Bluetooth mouse with your Nexus 7? I've watched videos on it. It, it makes for precise work. I've ordered a Bluetooth mouse uh, using you know Bluetooth 3.0 for my Samsung Galaxy Note 2 after watching a video of, uh, of a person using it on there. So, uh, yeah, I think the mouse is here. To, so you're going to be here for a while. Well, yeah. the, the mouse as we know it today will change. And what we call a mouse today is probably going to be something similar to a stylus like this. And that's what our mouse is going to be. And it's going to mm -hmm. run on our desktop. It's like this? Our, yep, just yeah. like that. It's going to run on our desktop. It's going to run on our screen. That That's what we'll, you know, that will be our pointing device. And I have said this before, and I'll say it again, because it's worth noting that these styluses, I thought originally I didn't need it, that I could just use my finger. But after using the stylus on the Nexus 7 and my A500, it is extremely precise and allows me to collect, uh, uh, connect and draw to things that my finger, I would have had to tap two or three times to do. So, you know, these, these, are, are what's going to be the mouse or mice of our future. One of these. Yeah, Dan Nichols, Dan Nichols says they can have my keyboard and mouse when they can pry them from my cold dead hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ouch. Rich, uh, Richard, you, 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 you know, back to the original question is, is the Surface Pro really, was Microsoft right with what they're doing? I think the answer is it's not where we want to be, but it is where <laughs> we're going, and this is the step to where we want to be. But isn't I, I think that you're absolutely Apple right about that. Apple has kind of led people no, no, down see. the road, and now Microsoft is doing the same thing, saying, you know, you might not want this. This might not be the thing you think now, but later on, trust me, you're going to love it. And A Apple, Apple started the, the pack towards compatibility, but really the iPad is just an oversized iPod or, I, you know, an oversized iPod in terms of its iPad. It really can't do the complex computing stuff that we all want. That's why the iPad will never replace, or at least at this current version, could never be contemplated as replacing the desktop or the laptop. The Surface Pro gives that possibility. I don't know about that. I've seen students using them, and I mean, that's literally their computer. Yeah, like complex yeah, but... uh, complex stuff. What do you mean by that? I mean, if we're talking, you know, uh, like like a, you know, like video editing or something like that, maybe not. But actually, the vast majority of people don't use that. And in terms of that, it could, you know, the, the sort of iPad form factor is more likely to, uh, 
you know, sort of replace consumer electronics than the Surface RT because it, at least it works. Uh, I think it's a difference between power users versus, you know, uh, media consumption and casual email writing and things like that. So when you get into the power using, as Joseph is alluding to, obviously you're going to need something with a little bit more horsepower because you'd never be able to render any kind of th any kind of video or any kind of large files or any kind of huge spreadsheets that are inter uh, interconnected using something small. It's just not going to work. Forget that. Trying to make a try to write a book using the iPad. That's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to create tables and do those complex, you know, uh, uh, references to the sources and 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 linkages with that. There's just no, Apple. Apple doesn't have any uh, writing software that does it. Even Google Docs that. doesn't do it. Right, right now. Right and now. Oh, yeah. Surface Pro actually does introduce. You're going to get iPad form factor with PC performance. And that's what they're touting it to be. So it is the stepping stone to where we're going in that iPad form factor. Right. Eventually you're going to see an iPad form factor with the power to do video editing, complex document creation, and, and, and media consumption. We're gonna get away from the concept of having this is my media consumption device. This is my performance work machine. They'll become one thing. Like I said, it's not where we want to be, but it's the stepping stone that we need to take to go where we're headed. Absolutely. All right, so let's uh, let's get on to the next Microsoft story real quickly. Microsoft is taking with or talking with Dell about financing its buyout. The deal is reported to be worth two million or two billion dollars. Uh, for the past few weeks, there have been reports that Dell has been in talks with Silver Lake Partners, a private equity firm, to buy out the public share shareholders. Uh, it has been reported that the buyout would be 13 to $14 dollars per share. CNBC broke uh, this news um, early this morning from Microsoft. What do you guys think about that buyout? I think it's, uh, it's what Microsoft needs. We were talking earlier about uh, RIM and did they need hardware to succeed. I, I've argued uh, here live on this show that if Microsoft has a product that resembles the iPhone, it's the Xbox. They control both the hardware and the software. Yeah. Microsoft has big plans with this, uh, with its Surface branded technology, uh, with the Windows phone, so forth, et cetera. Man, wouldn't they love to have a, a company like Dell in their back pocket to make those things happen? That, that uh, just screams antitrust. I mean, that was one of the big scares of Google when they went to go buy Motorola. Are they going to make that? And then what are the other companies going to do with their free Android? I mean, how they compete. That's why Motorola never got any of the Nexus products. Do you yeah, think but that? no, oh, it's, not, it's not, it's not, not going to be monopoly. It's not going to be antitrust. That, 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 that HP that bought Motorola, Compact. That Motorola deal is not 18 months old, man. Hey, it's young. We we're we're yet to see what Google's going to do with Motorola. I mean, no. if if they, if you you know if people start to get concerned about antitrust, no matter whether you know whether or not it happens, at least something positive will come from it. We're going to see a massive increase in the number of Linux users. No, yep. Carrie. No, Carrie yeah, won't. True. But what you're going to see is a is a a push a price point coming down on the uh, surface. That's what you're going to see. Here's here's one of the like buy one get ones because when they buy Dell. They're also going to get Alienware with it as well. Uh, Dell bought Alienware, what, three, four, five years ago now? Yeah. And they've kind of left them off to the side. They're like, okay, this is, you're, you guys are just over here. You're still under our umbrella, but, you know, you're, you're your own thing. So this is, this is going to be one of the things that a lot of people aren't going to see is that they're getting a, they're getting not only one of the biggest computer retails, they're also getting, you know, one of the biggest gaming, overpriced gaming <laughs> machines that, that they can get. So, I, I, so I think it's a good move. I personally think it's a great move. I think they're going to have control of the hardware and the software. They're going to push the price point down, and um, it's going to work for them. 
Well, they're well, going to stimulate the market, aren't they? That's you know they're going to give another because Dell, at the moment, ah, uh, I, I I can't say a good word about Dell. But if Microsoft were to you know to to you know buy out Dell and make the premium devices kind of like Apple do and drive the price points down, we could see a lot more sort of uh, you know stimulated market, and that'd be quite good. Hey, Kyron, I got one one positive for Dell: job security for PC technicians. Okay, well, I can give you about a thousand negatives to combat that. True. You know? <laughs> like True. sending off a computer for five months to get the CD tray fixed, getting it back, and they say, we can't fix it. <laughs> I fixed it. I fixed it with a screwdriver. That's all it took. Wow. Why did you send it off in the first place? Bitter I, party I of one. Warranty. I had warranty. I didn't want to mess about with it. You know, it was like, I, I don't want to mess with that. No, okay, yeah, I'll do it myself. <laughs> Come on, Syrian. They may never take my PC, but they'll never take my freedom, right? <laughs> From your cold, dead hands. They can take my screwdriver in my chest. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, it seems that social media is being used for all kinds of things these days. In another stupid tech moment, we're going to turn it over to Duke to talk about this one. Okay, well, you know, uh, people people love to post, uh, you know, across social networks exactly what they're doing. You know, uh, just got up from bed, just had a cup of coffee. Uh, oh, my goodness, coffee and a cigarette makes my bowels move. I got to go to the bathroom. Uh, and, and, and in typical posting too much information to Facebook and Twitter, it seems that there's this one guy who uh, he was uh, posting on Facebook he was about to get shot, and uh, this guy got shot. Turns out this was a pretty evil dude in trouble with the law, and I think the police were having the 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 uh, they basically had the gun on him when he posted to Facebook that he was about to get shot. And uh, yeah, uh, another uh, moment where technology makes us even stupider than we really are. Well, it just it reminds me of the Explosion, the guys who do Cyanide and Happiness. They made a cartoon about this sort of thing. Guy gets in a car crash because he's texting while driving, and a cop pulls over to him. And he's you know he's wounded on the floor, and he just goes. He hands him the sort of his entrails, which are coming out, and he's like, "Hold these. I have to. I have to uh, post this on Facebook." Yep. You know, it, we we do that nowadays. That is what we would do. You know, if we were about to go down in a plane crash, it's like, well, better tweet it. You take that time to text your family. I, I think you've got that right. Uh, <laughs> social media is becoming way too easy to use for all sorts of things. And I think this was one of the extremes. But, hey, it helped him in the end. He got shot. He got better. Everything's good. Everybody's happy. So what is good and what is wonderful in the world for all the Apple fanboys is that Apple posted record earnings for the first quarter of 2013. Thirteen point one billion in profit and fifty four point five billion in revenue. Record. Uh, that's a record of forty seven point eight million iPhones sold. What do you guys say about that? It stock still dropped twelve percent on the on on poor expectations. Well, while, while it was record, it wasn't what they're expecting. Yeah, it's it's Apple is running into some rough times. It's it's. Uh, it's it's a shame, you know. They're yeah, down to that, today. It's down to sixty three dollars. So it's down four dollars, four hundred and fifty dollars and fifty cents, right? And uh, also they're cut back on their orders on the the iPhone. So it, it's not looking good. Their stock price reflects their attitude. They're not thinking about the future. They're they're coasting. They're just thinking about the present. Like there was a story about like rumors about they might make a, a larger iPhone in the coming in the coming year. And they've basically said, we're not going to make a bigger iPhone. That's not going to happen, at least not this year. And it's just like, you know, the market is is advancing so far ahead. We, you know, like some of the things Samsung uh, showed at CES were just, you know, while they may not be, you know, they may not all be practical, they were certainly awesome to look at. Apple is stagnant at the moment, it would seem. They can still sell stuff. They sold a record 47.8 million iPhones. More iPhones than they've ever sold in any other quarter. Okay? But it's the market correcting itself. 
um, the new guy, uh, I forget his name, Tim Cook, is doing what every other um, uh, every other CEO does. All they do is look at the short term and pander to its shareholders, which is fine if you're just weren't trying to make a quick buck. But this is kind of how we got stuck in where we were three or four years ago, where everyone kind of wrapped things up and no one really made anything productive. And, you know, it's sad. This is just the way we are. And, and, and right now, Apple is now starting to experience that. Everything, everything but the iMac, they sold more of. Okay. Every product that Apple makes, they sold more of than they ever had. We're, we're not saying they didn't do a good job. We're just saying this is a price correction. I yeah, just, but, I, it's a cruel, cruel world's what I got to say, man. Yeah, but, the, I the, but I would imagine that Samsung's had a similar increase in uh, sales. More people are buying consumer electronics now. Uh, so, you know, that that's what's really changed is just more people are buying them. Uh, well, I, that, that may very well be true, but Verizon just posted that they actually have more users going from Android to iOS than from iOS to Android. Something that Apple is doing is still capturing a huge percentage of the market. So if we, we take into account that yes, more people are buying smartphones. Yes, we're selling more devices on the whole. The bottom line is, is when you're comparing apples to apples, there are more people going over to iPhone than there are going over to Android from iPhone. Or at least, no, uh, I, at I, least I, on I, Verizon, because I, I, in, in Britain, I don't think that's the case at all. But the, but the stock doesn't reflect that. The reflect, in the last six months, you know, since Samsung had his the Galaxy Note come out, the new one, right? And all the Android news, it's down 26%. 26%. That's a big number. And that's not just based on expectations. That's based on, you know, on consumer, you know, voting. And they're beginning to vote away from Apple. And even though they're selling more, they're not selling it like they should be. And guess what? It, they're being, it's, it's, it's being reflected. Well, what they should be selling at is some analyst opinion as to how many they should be selling. Okay? That's an analyst opinion. Uh -huh. and, and, and I'll still yet maintain that as popular as the iPhone has been since 2006, and for Apple to sell 47.8 million more than any other quarter have they ever sold, it is a cruel, cruel world at Wall Street. Okay? Yeah. That, I mean, it, it, but that must like, be, it's got to be, you're looking at it in, in terms of like uh, kids saying Apple is done, you know, it's not fashionable anymore. They're moving away from it. The Galaxy Note is taking off. You know, it, there is just, they're looking at the future and they're saying, ah, you know, they're not innovating. They're not doing this. The, pro the, the stock is reflecting what smart people are, bully, you know, Well, what believing. you're assuming, what you're assuming though is that we all think that way. We we have these conversations because we follow the trends. Obviously, there's 47.8 million people out there in the last quarter who don't think like you and I think. Mm. I mean, yeah. uh, well, it's like, it's, but it's like it's the same problem because like my uncle, uh, he recently uh, his contract ran out uh, and he was renewing his phone. So he asked me. He said to me, now. He said, "Do I get an i? Uh, do I get an iPhone? I can get an iPhone 4s, or should I go for an Android phone?" And you know, I asked him, you know, what what do you use it for? What you know? And I gave him my phone to play around with for a little while. And you know, I have a Samsung Galaxy S2. He got com a bit confused by it, and I said to him, "Like, okay, fine, right. Uh, are you going to be paying anything extra for the iPhone?" He said, "No." I said, "Buy, yeah, get the iPhone then, because." This, you know, the simple fact, you know, fact of the matter is, not everyone is willing to go to Android yet. Yeah. iPhone is very established, and it is a trusted product. Right or wrong, you know, I personally absolutely despise iOS, but I can see that my mother has iPhone and I iPad. You know, there are still a lot of people who are going to want it. So for a while, it is going to continue to be extremely popular, even more popular. You know, it, it might be the next year we get, a, you know, a, it's still more popular than it is now. But the future will show that it's not going to stay that way. 
Yeah. You know, I think it's it might take a while, but it's going to happen. That's what they're predicting. Well, just before we move to the news uh, in the Espresso section of the show, I want to quickly touch on a little bit more financial news. Google's shares are now on the rise following a strong earnings report yesterday. It's early trading. Google's shares jumped more than 5% to $740.37. The company's stock price closed the day at $702.87. Yesterday, Google's share jump is due in part to Google's strong fourth quarter. What do you guys have to say about that real quick? I, the one thing that I'm just going to throw in here, I found it interesting that Google talked about every piece of Google's business yesterday except its social network, Google Plus. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, right now, are they making money off of Google Plus that we know of? Not at all. The thing they said, they said, like, well, we, we, we don't need to advertise Google Plus, you know, it's, we don't I need to put adverts on it. Uh, we make money elsewhere. We're going to keep that a clean experience. You know, that's I, I think I personally think that's nice, and it makes a, a lovely contrast to what Facebook's doing. You know, well, I, Google is looking for the long game. They're playing the long game, and they're playing it magnificently, right? And their stock is going up because guess what? They are the big boy in the block. They will remain to be the big boy in the block. They have they create an ecosystem that everyone wants to use. Uh, and they have a long view. They don't have a short view. They have a long view. And I think that's where Apple is faltering right now. They're looking at short-term goals where, where Google is looking at longer-term strategies. Let's not do advertisements. Let's create something where people like. People can't stand advertisements, so why should we bombard it? It's not making that money. It doesn't have that much money. doesn't have that much many viewers anyways as compared to facebook so why should we put advertisements in it hmm. well what's what's the best form of advertising word of mouth you cannot yeah. you cannot pay enough to be enough word of mouth i think the thing is like the way i see them at the moment the three tech giants google is kind of doing the most you know it's making the most it's it's having fun with itself um hold on a second oh What's We're happening? Off air. We are off air. We are off air. We lost Duke. Uh, oh. Oh. We gotta. You wait can keep for him to come back. Keep, but we're off air. Rec- but, yeah, I'm but, still uh, recording. So Richard's we can stream it. Locally. Yeah, he's Richard's recording streaming it. So okay. we'll, right. that'll be the finished copy up. Okay. Right? Roll. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so um, the way I see it, like Google is still doing the most because they don't rely on selling devices as much as Apple and Microsoft. Microsoft is the boldest at the moment. They're making the biggest change from their previous image. Apple is eh, stagnant. You know, it's not doing much. I'm mm-hmm. a Mac. I've been a Mac user for a while, and I've got to tell you, the change in you know, the last two operating system updates, very little change. Not worth yeah. money. Google is just—they're just outsmarting the competition. They're—they're—they're they're, they're investing in cloud services. They're investing in, you know, uh, mobile devices. They're investing in driverless cars. They're investing in Google Glass. They're investing in media consumption. You know, so they are just, they are just doing it. They are rocking it, and they're continuing to rock it. And guess what? They're, it's going to be, say, it's the, you know, it's going to be the dominant player at the end of the game, even though they're not pushing Google Plus, which is, you know, Amazing, right? Amazing. And, and some of those things are not even going to stick to the wall, and that's okay. It doesn't matter that, you know, not everything has to be a, you know, at the ballpark success for Google to still maintain its dominance and, and be the big leader that we think it's going to be. That they, they really are playing for the long game, as Joe describes it, and they're doing all of these things as you're describing, Jeff so that they maintain and grow their their consumer base slowly. And, you know, I, I said in, in chat a second ago, you know, get people addicted to the services first, and that's what we are becoming with Google, and then you can do what you want. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Like, Apple, Apple is playing it safe. 
now that that's exactly what it looks like you know we oh we brought out a new iphone what have we changed it's slightly taller slightly faster great that's not a change that's you know an augmentation um and it's you know like i say it's the same with their operating system there's been no real major change microsoft seems to be you know they're 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 kind of more in panic mode than anything they're sort of like okay we need to change our image now Google, of course, doesn't sell it doesn't sell devices. Its primary source of income. It's an advertising agency, so you know it can have its side projects. And like you say, not all of them have to stick. Not all of them have to uh, work. Like not all of them have to work with the consumers. Uh, they will find out. They can pick and choose. They are the real innovators because of their business model. Uh, Apple right. is preaching to the choir. Google is reaching for the heavens. All right, guys, I hate to cut everybody awesome. off, but uh, we do have to get on to the last part of our show, and that's time to pour yourself a steaming hot cup of espresso. And I'm going to turn it over to George, who's going to take us through our espresso report this week. All right, I have a steaming hot cup of lager. Either way. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, um it, it, it appears that the uh, executive chairman of Google and his daughter, Sophie, um, Eric Schmidt, of course, was the executive chairman, had gone to um, North Korea uh, on a nice little, uh, I guess, visit to discuss how North Korea has no internet. Anyways, and how they're lagging behind. Um, but the, the main part of that was basically um, uh, Sophie had come back with a bunch of comments, uh, basically comparing North Korea to the Truman Show. Um, Basically, the people there don't really have any conscience of who they are, what they do, or what's on the outside world. Um, in other news, uh, RIM has a, uh, a yearly conference or an event called BlackBerry World. They have changed that to BlackBerry Live, trying to, I guess, enhance their image again, even though they just are kind of trying to sell off their hardware division. Who knows what that's going to be like. Um, uh, let's see, Amazon and Netflix. Well, uh, basically, uh, Netflix seems to have more original content, and uh, Amazon's trying to push that out there. They actually acquired um, the rights to uh, have Zombieland um, streamed across them. Zombieland, not the movie, but the TV show that's going to be airing on CBS. So they have jumped on top of that. Um, in other news, it looks like uh, somebody has found that Cuba is getting faster internet other than getting the satellites. They have actually um, the worst internet in Latin America, as uh, is, has is, been described. Um, but uh, it seems like the Spanish telecommunications company, um, I, at the Telefonica, is um, come into play with the Cuban telecommunications agency to uh, put a cable in to uh, give them faster, better internet. Right now they're relying on slower, older satellite technology to get their internet. Ah, and let's see. It looks like uh, Dish Network um, is coming up with a, a, a way of zapping commercials, which is peeving off CBS right now. CBS is uh, not liking the idea of uh, lost revenue from, from, <laughs> from their commercials being sent out there by mm -hmm. people zapping the commercials. Either way, that's pretty much uh, Expresso tonight. Now, is there any truth, you know, on this BlackBerry story, how they changed it from BlackBerry World to BlackBerry Live? You know, Rim is really in the kind of the death throes. I heard that the uh, the mascot for BlackBerry Live was a CPR dummy that they're going to use to try to breathe life back in it. Is there any truth to that rumor? Um, I hope it's I, one I, of the crash I, test dummies. I believe <laughs> Joe is bringing that CPR dummy in person to Toronto. Oh, in yeah. okay. Of Ring. It could be. It could be the. Um, they're going to hand out defibrillators to everybody. You know. You want, so. me, you, you want me to tell you what's really bad about this uh, BlackBerry Live event? It it's runs. It's not going to be May, live. It, it runs May fourteenth to sixteenth. Guess when Google's I/O event is? <laughs> oh, like, any, like, like any developers are going to show up for BlackBerry's <laughs> event when well, they're all at Google. Oh, there'll be like yeah, three yeah. or four of them there with the dummy. Uh, yeah, will show. The three or four the... who couldn't get a ticket to Google I.O. Just I mean, that had to be. Oh. Yeah, I'd really, want, I'd really rather have BlackBerry swag than Google's swag, right? <laughs> yeah. Going to do their usual Oprah, and you get one, and you get one, and you get one. I mean, yeah, that's the yeah. that's the best thing is that Black, uh, the R.I.M. has actually only made two BlackBerry devices, so if only two developers show up, they're in the clear. <laughs> yeah, hey, we're good. 
Well, guys, I want to thank you all for having me on the show and hosting the show tonight. It was a blast. You guys are great to hang out with. Always like being a part of this uh, this group. And uh, let's go down the line and say goodnight to each and every one of you. And we'll start with Bruce Turner down at the end. Bruce, you have to say goodbye. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Tell you what. Let me uh, let me just uh, do it this way, if I can. You've been listening to Tech Newsweek, a weekly series where we talk tech, brought to you by Tech and Coffee, a Google Plus Hangout. We want to invite you to check out our Hangout. You can do so by going to techandcoffee.info and clicking on Join the Hangout where you can find a link to our existing Hangout. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Tech and Coffee One. We appreciate you joining us, and uh, y'all come back now, you hear? And we're off air.